This is the Hot Wheels Diora 2, and you can see there's a bunch of other vehicles in here. So this project is super cool. It was built in a span of just 24 weeks. The Diora 2 you see here was actually created by Chip Foose and 5-Axis, and you can see it even opens on the front hatch. And the Endeavor was actually funded by Mother's Wax. The base vehicle construction is from a Cadillac DeVille DTS, a vehicle selected for its front-wheel drivetrain setup that could easily be converted to the back of the vehicle. The final body was constructed with fiberglass and of course you can see that sort of fun fact that supercharger sticking out of the back and just the whole thing looks absolutely incredible i think it's cool that that top hatch even opens so they can store stuff back there but aside from that the vehicle was first previewed at sema and it made its way to the hot wheels hall of fame gala at the hands of carson levin j leno after its temporary residence in the peterson automotive resume the vehicle has been used numerous times for miscellaneous hot wheels events like the one you see here this is actually the hot wheels uh, phoenix debut and it's just a super cool way to uh, build a new vehicle. Now the vehicle we're looking at here is actually the Twin Mill, which is another super cool vehicle. So this was obviously one of the original vehicles that made a debut in 1969, and it's super cool with the way they did the dual engine setup that actually has over 1400 horsepower. And this was a pretty interesting project because it, it changed hands a few different times as they started the project with Chip Foose and Boyd Connington, but unfortunately some other issues caused the vehicle not to be finished, where it was then handed over to Barry Lobeck to actually finish the vehicle where it was unveiled at the 2001 SEMA show. Looks absolutely wicked. So this one here is a 1968 Chevrolet Corvette Hot Wheels commission from Gas Monkey Garage. So Mattel actually approached Richard Rawlings about building the car you see here, which features a massive 427 engine with a four-speed manual transmission and, of course, a big blown big block thrown in there. It's sitting on 20 by 12 wheels and 18 by 8 wheels with an off a one-off set of custom Mickey Thompson Sportsman's, complete with the signature Redline custom mold into the tires. So this car is super cool, especially that giant YN 871 blower and the dual Hollies on there. Looks absolutely insane. And you can see here that it's also got um, some custom flares which have been added on. And I, th I like the whole Midas Monkey stuff on the touch. I also like the exhaust that sits in that front side because it's very reminiscent of stuff like the Monkey Mobile, which is pretty cool. This car here is the Porsche 914 Safari, which is a super cool car. So this one has obviously a full lift kit and a ton of modifications and the Hot Wheels for these are actually super cool if you haven't seen them. Uh, this one in particular being a 914 obviously started with a 2 liter flat 6 in there that was rated at just 108 horsepower and 118 pound feet of torque. This one is just, I think it looks too good, to be honest. You can see the full suspension in there, even the drilled rotors in there, and they still have the Porsche caps. This is obviously the white version, which is sponsored by a bunch of different people, but I, this is probably one of my favorite ones in here, especially going with the uh, Hot Wheels Momo steering wheel in there. Still have some of the classic Porsche gauges and still manage to fit them in there with that roll cage along with the Recaro seats. And the best part is, is when you come around to the back here, and you look, you can actually see part of the engine. So you can see that the Porsche toolkit and leather, and then that awesome flat six in there, tucked with some nice bright yellow to contrast the rest of the car, which would have matched the original body. So the first version was actually yellow with some cookie cutter style wheels, and then this white one, they swapped the wheels out. So it's a little bit different. You can see some cuddles and stuff, just really finishing off that Ferrari look, which in my opinion looks, or sorry, Ferrari, Porsche, that Porsche look, which looks fantastic. What a good looking car. Here, this is unmistakable. This is, of course, the Bone Shaker, a very famous Hot Wheels hot rod. This one in particular is powered by a 5.7 liter V8 from a Corvette. And obviously you can see it's got all sorts of cool bits on it. Those exhaust tips are super cool. The custom skull, and you can even see the fabrication marks for the hands that hold the headlights is super cool. You can see the fully built suspension and you can even start to see the vertebrae on that shifter that sticks out of the top, which is a little odd. The hot rod was actually designed by Larry Wood and obviously distinct has a very distinctive skull and is one of Larry's favorite Hot Wheels to date, which is super cool. I mean, I, I should also point out a lot of this car is really based on a C5 Corvette. You can see the chairs. The chairs don't look super comfortable. I can't imagine you want to take this on a very long drive. Even got the hydro e-brake in there. And again, another Hot Wheels Momo steering wheel, which is always a nice touch. And that this shifter is just crazy. I don't even I don't even know how you drive this car, to be honest. Probably just grab it and shift it a little weird um cool hood school it's kind of just in the back of the car some fuel cell bits and that's kind of it this is uh the phoenix hot wheels show so this is all the cars that they ended up bringing 
which all in all looks pretty cool. It's it's cool to see Hot Wheels not only build, obviously, the 164 scale versions of their car, package scale cars, but then also build the full-size versions and even take it to the events. You can see that these cars on their own just have a very cool presence. And this was prior to all of the car show cars for the Phoenix event actually showing up, so this was all kind of filmed first thing in the morning. Look at that. Those engines are huge. The 1400 horsepower coming from the twin mill is no joke. Probably one of the coolest projects being that everything was built uh, completely from scratch. But the Diora is also cool with the way that they filmed, uh, the way that they built it to even make the front hatch open. And you can even see the interior. So the radio and everything kind of sits down over top of that hatch. So pretty wild with the way they built that. I would, I would kill to drive the Diora. I think that's such a cool project. And the giant wheels, it just makes me think of like Highway 35 and those other shows. And then the surfboards even say Highway 35 on them. So if you guys haven't watched that show, that one's a ton of fun. Um, sort of, I think that's where a lot of us get this from, even though the Diora was one of the earlier cars actually coming out. So I'll go ahead and feature some more footage just kind of going around to the different cars, and I'll just go ahead and put some music so you don't have to listen to me talking.